Do we check? Go back with another video. Post review. New way to <laughs> First off, uh, I can't start this video with saying two weeks spent with every knife. This is probably a very eclectic group of knives we had this time around. So we'll start off with the Harn's Beak. I want it to be known that I don't dislike this knife. But keep in mind that of the three that are here, that this is the one that had the tip break and also had the lock give out. And it's the way it's the, the blade is shaped. It's not meant for, for anything we're doing. But it, to reiterate what we had said, it is a novelty, exotic-looking blade. I would carry it. I mean... Well, it, we both agree. We yeah, would carry this. Not, like, not for, like, working purpose, but for... Why not purpose? You know what I mean? Like I, I just feel like there are definite like definitely some technician jobs out there with it where this would have a real act, yeah. absolute purpose. Or you just want the wow factor of like you pull out a knife and like like oh shit, that thing's pretty cool. Usability or practicality? Yeah. It really didn't do that well. Um But it was thirty three dollars as well. Yeah. I mean that really was not that bad. This is just to show you that just because something does not get either stamp, it doesn't mean we don't like it. We both enjoyed it. No. We thought it was a fun knife. So that brings us to the second one. The Camillus Beast with the... Fucking... <laughs> not carried because it weighs like two pounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which I was going to say. So the reason I did not carry this, obviously, was the broken tip. And we did not purchase a second one no. to carry. We kind of stopped doing it. Now with this one. I put this in my pocket for about three hours, and my I could not ignore the fact that there was this big-ass knife. It just overall, we said it was a great backpack knife, but in your pocket, EDC? No. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Angelo's Edge Grace, because that was a fun one to play around with. Though. Yeah, and I mean, channel's not all about finding the best of the best. It's about unique it too. <laughs> Gotta go back to Grandpa's knife. I lo I lo I love this knife. It was I mean, it was fantastic across the board. It defeated every test, and I mean defeated. That being said, again I carried this for four days. So it doesn't I, no pocket clip. So I tried to back pocket carry for a little bit. And again, once once the knife would just slide flat, you couldn't sit down without feeling that. So I switched it to the front pocket. The front pocket, again, the weight of it, it is an excessively heavy knife in terms of carrying in your pocket, especially without a pocket clip. Now, I know it came with the sheath, but again, my day-to-day -day routine does not really call for walking around with the sheath on my belt. We live in Pennsylvania. You see guys with sheets on all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about more for my job. I like to carry it all day, so even at my job. Yeah, the sheath thing, I mean, it, it's just not our style. Same way with, with concealed carry or, or, or anything I have on me. When I'm at work and I need a flashlight and I reach into my pocket and I pull out a flashlight or I have a Fisher space pen, you know, those little things. And people kind of look at me like, what the hell do you have that in your pocket for? Like, I don't want people to know I have that stuff. I don't want people to know that I prep. I don't want people to know that I carry a knife or, or carry a firearm. All that stuff, I, I like to keep secret, you know. That being said, the whole sheath carry thing kind of like gives it away. This is not the last you're going to be seeing of Buck. And this is not the last you're going to be seeing of this Buck. The fact that it, it's been in on the market for so long, it has accessories. It has, I mean, even when you were purchasing this, the different types of inlets that you yeah. could get purchased on this. I, actually, a handful of you commented almost immediately and reminded us about the thumb stud that you could purchase for about $7. That'll give this more of an assist with opening. I also found a sheath for your belt that does not go up and down but goes sideways. Yeah. I kind of like that's concealed to me. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I agree. And, of course, we've had a few of you mention the 112, and maybe you'll be seeing that soon. Who knows? I am so impressed and so excited about this this knife <laughs> all throughout the fall. Zero wiggle after all of the abuse we put it through. I think you're giving up 
your weight for your quality. If you we could find a comfortable way to carry that, I think that's like all around best well rounded EDC knife. Also brings us to the other possibility. There is a Buck one ten with nylon grips and a pocket clip. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about it other than yeah. those facts. <laughs> but the thing about that is, so we're gonna get it, obviously, because I feel like we have. Buck to. blew us out of the f-ing water here. Will the nylon? I mean, I know it's gonna change the feeling, but will it change the the feeling of quality when you feel it? Pick this up. This feels just like a solid, f-ing, like piece of work. Right? Yeah. It's just everything about it is just strong, beautiful craftsmanship. And I'll be honest with you, with that lifetime warranty. I've always disliked the this combination because I always thought cheap because I think in all all the knockoffs I've had of like fake bucks and everything like that where they put you know just a coating and a coating to make it kind of look <laughs> so like this. The one time you got the real deal and you now think it's a cheap thing. I didn't when I first opened it. I'm like it's just ugly, but it's kind of like Civil War era, like you know what I mean. Like that, that's kind of what it I makes mean, you feel like. Old school, again, grandpa's knife. When that this made. came out, it probably was that new shit. You know what I mean? Like, you're just, it, was we're probably, talk- it was probably the thing that like people paid extra for. We're like, talking oh, about a brass? model okay. that has barely changed yeah. in any way since what did I say? 62? 72? I don't and then think when the blade is down. butchered to shit, you send it off. Right back to Buck, and ten dollars later, you got a brand new blade put in there as well. I'm about to just start going to flea markets and buying f-ing rusted up bucks, and sending them back to Buck and being like, for real. Man. Across the table, though, I like all of them. everything was a great knife. They didn't get the stamp because of obvious reasons, but not obvious reasons of like they sucked. Obvious reasons of they had some flaws. And Buck got both, which we were not yeah. expecting. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one more thing to add with this. After all the time, oh my god, closing this is... Yeah, no, it's still a bit... It's a beast. Possible. There we go. These were all recommendations. That's what my next point was going to be. Keep throwing out the recommendations, man. We got a Google Drive that we've we got keep it on. Jay Slaughter of the Soul, Angelo's Edge Grace, and Butterbean Outdoors. I didn't even look at these knives before I ordered them. I was just like... And then look at specs. I was like, oh, this guy, you know, recommended this one. Add, add to cart. It's only 30 bucks. Add to cart. Add to cart. I'm pretty blown away by how good they were and without doing any research or anything like that. Like, subscribe. We do have a P.O. box now. If you're looking to send something, uh, shoot us an email at newagetactical at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram. Hit that bell. Links to everything down in the description. Other than that, New Age Tactical. Over and out.